The Lamy 2000 has been a staple in pen collections for decades. Created in 1966, its design has stood the test of time, still having the feel of a modern writing instrument. The Bauhaus inspired design values functionality and simplicity, both of which can be seen in the seamless shape of the pen. The Lamy 2000 is made of Macrolon, a mixture of black fiberglass and stainless steel. To me, it feels like wood you would find in a chair or a table, but others say it feels like a rubbery plastic. The whole body has a seamless brushed pattern that extends all the way to the stainless steel section. The top of the pen has a steel circle, which complements the silver stonewashed design of the clip. The clip has a spring mechanism as opposed to the tension clips on other pens, such as this Pilot Custom 64. It holds on well to most places you would clip the pen to. The Lamy 2000 has a piston filling mechanism, which holds about 1.8 milliliters of ink. The knob is concealed almost perfectly into the top portion of the pen because of the continuity in the brush pattern. Directly above the section, there's an ink viewing window. You can only see the ink status clearly if you hold the window up to a light source, but I'm fine with this as I'd rather have a smaller, more obscure ink window than a large, clear window that would kind of ruin the aesthetic of the pen. Filling the pen is pretty simple. You just twist the knob counterclockwise to lower the piston. Then with your pen inside the ink bottle, twist the knob clockwise until it's seamless with the body. This brings me to the one and only issue I have this, with this pen. After filling the pen, the, the brushed pattern of the section holds on to some ink in the crevices. So it's kind of hard to get that residue ink off. So one of the methods I like to use is with a wet Q-tip because that gets in between all of the crevices and it gets most of the ink out, but sometimes I just leave it there. If you use waterproof ink, this may be more difficult for you. The pen's 28 grams when posted and 18 grams without the cap. When writing without the cap, the center of mass is pretty close to the section. So posting the pen shifts it towards the center, allowing for a more balanced writing experience. It's not difficult to use while unposted though. It's just that your fingers will be bearing most of the pen's weight. If you plan to write long essays or take hours of notes, the weight of the pen can tire your hand out, especially when it's posted. But for me, it hasn't been much of a problem, so it really just depends on how you write and how used you are to holding a heavy pen. The hooded nib is made out of 18 karat gold and is coated with rhodium. It doesn't flex as much as other gold nibs, but it's also not completely rigid. It has a soft character. In terms of writing, the Lamy 2000 has some light feedback, but overall it's pretty smooth. On some paper, like five star binder paper, it can produce a squeak-like sound that may be annoying to some. For me, this wasn't an issue because I got used to it after a while. On most smooth papers, however, there's little to no sound. There is one issue though. Unless the nib is in the perfect orientation, it may be necessary to put a little pressure before writing each word or character. And this is because the contact point on the nib is flat. Comparing it to the nib on a Pilot Custom 74, you can clearly see the difference in shape. So unless you're getting full contact with a square shaped tip, you need to apply some pressure. You can of course practice keeping a constant angle with the paper to avoid this problem, but this may take some time to get used to. Here's a writing sample on the Rhodia dot pad. The nib allows for some line variation, but you need to put a significant amount of pressure to actually see it. Reverse writing is pretty scratchy.
The nib is very wet, so if you don't have good paper, it could bleed through. Overall, the Lamy 2000 is a solid pen. The nib is smooth and soft, the body has a high quality and heavy feel to it, and the rich history behind this pen makes it feel like you're holding an important artifact. I especially like how the pen isn't too flashy, it doesn't have any unnecessary ornamentation. It's an embodiment of the Bauhaus philosophy in the pen world. Overall, I'd give this pen an 8.6 out of 10.